welcome back to my epoch server tutorial series this tutorial is about setting up custom loadouts this is one of my personal scripts and it's been written for easy usability and modification a lot of people have requested it so here it is this is a relatively easy install the first part of the video has the install and the second has the setup i suggest you do the setup part of this video because it explains how to set up your own custom loadouts. There is a default loadout system already set up and in place, but it's mainly there for demonstration purposes. So, as always, to get the files, you need to go to the link in the description. That link will take you to this page right here, and on the right side, you can download the zip file. So go ahead and download the custom loadout zip and copy it to your desktop. From here you want to extract the files and now we have the needed files. You will need to open this up and set it to the side for now. Go into your server and find the mission that you want to install this for. It's normally in your MP missions folder. If you're with a host service it may be somewhere else. For me, it's, I'm going to have to look into the Epoch 11 Trinaris folder. And now what you need to do is copy over the custom folder. It will ask you if you want to merge them. Say yes. You can also just copy the contents if you have your own custom already. And now that's it for the files in here. And what we need to do is go back to the GitHub page and open up the init SQF. From here we want to find this line on the GitHub page and copy it. Go over to your init SQF, go down to the bottom, return a couple lines to make sure it stays neat, and then paste in the code. Go ahead and save the init, and that's the actual install. Now once the install is done, we can go ahead and actually start modifying everything. So what you want to do is open up the web page right here at the bottom of the GitHub. This will take you to a page that has all the class IDs that you'll need. Now go back to your mission folder, open up the custom folder, and open up the loadout script. Now in here you'll see that there are a few places to put a user ID. If you have my Epoch admin tools installed, you don't need to worry about these two. You can skip them. If you don't have the tools installed, you'll need to use these for the admins and mods. This is so that you can have a different setup for the admins, the moderators, the different donator levels, and then of course your normal players. Now if you don't want the admins or the moderators to have their own custom loadout like this, you can simply go into the if statement and write false for the admin loadout there and then do the same thing for the moderator loadout. This will skip these parts of it and you'll still have the pro donor and the normal donor. If you don't want those you don't have to worry about the false. This false only matters if you have the epoch admin tools installed. Some people don't want the admins or the moderators to have their own special loadout. I personally have it like that in mind because when an admin logs in, if they've died for whatever reason, they're still going to need the items to perform their admin duties. Maybe they forgot to turn on god mode and someone killed them. It's really annoying to have to constantly spawn in everything you need. And then, of course, this is where our normal players will get all of their gear from. So right now you can see that we have the normal players getting a few bandages, morphine, painkiller, and a map, a hatchet, and of course a basic backpack. So what these variables mean is the default magazines is the primary inventory slots where you'll store your food and items. The default weapons is a little weird. This is where the map, the hatchet, all the tools like the toolbox and the fishing pole are stored as well as the primary and secondary weapon of the player. 
So that's everything that goes in there. And then of course your default backpack is just whatever backpack you're wearing, whether it's an Alice pack, a gun bag. And the default backpack weapon is what's in the backpack. Like you can have an AS-50 or something like that in there. Normally you don't want to use that section because if it can't fit in the player's inventory, you're probably giving them too many items. So let's go ahead and edit this real quick so you understand how that works. Let's say that we don't want the player to have any of those items. We're going to add our own in. Well, what do we want them to have? Let's say we want them to have food. Look for the food section and we'll give them a cooked steak because steak replenishes blood. So find whatever you want in here. You can also control F to find it. As you can see, it will show you where they are. And then take the class name, which is right here. So to add that into the inventory for a normal player, we go inside of the brackets here and open up a quotation mark. Paste in the class name and then close the quotation. So that gives them one steak. Let's say we want them to have two cooked steaks. You put a comma, open another quotation, paste the name in again and close the quotation. So now they have two cooked steaks in their inventory. Well, they're also going to need something to drink. We could give them a water bottle or something like that, but let's go ahead and just give them a Coke. So we'll need the item soda Coke. And we'll just give them one of those. Again, you need a comma, the quotation mark, the item name, and then the close quote. Instead of giving the player a hatchet, maybe we want to give them a gun. Let's look up here and we'll give them a sidearm of, let's see, a Makarov seems good. Remember that the class name is on the right. The class name may be the exact same as the normal name. That happens sometimes. So instead of the hatchet here, we're going to give them the Makarov. Now they have a Makarov sidearm. Remember that goes in the default weapon. If you want to give them a primary, that also goes in the default weapon. You can see up here for the pro donor that they have a G36K camo as their primary and M9 as their secondary. And then they also have the night vision goggles, GPS, knife, things like that. All of that goes in the default weapon. So we gave them the Makarov, but we also needed to give them some ammo for it. The best part about this website here is for every gun, it lists the ammo right with it. So we're going to go ahead and copy that ammo name as well. Do not take the parentheses. You only need the ammo name itself. The ammo goes in the default magazine. So again, comma, quote, name, close quote. Now they have one 8-round magazine of Makarov ammo. This website has everything you'll need from all the guns, the different ammo, food, items, all of that stuff. The only thing that's wrong with this site here is that the hatchet is not just item hatchet or melee hatchet. It needs to have an underscore DZE after it. So if you look here, the I have it as item hatchet underscore DZE. If you just have the hatchet, then it's not going to have any hits left. You'll have the hatchet, but it will show zero hits left for the ammo. If you use the DZE one, you'll have the infinite ammo that a normal hatchet should have. And the difference between the two here is that the item is in the inventory. The melee is in the player's hand. So it starts as if it were a primary weapon. That is the difference between those, and that's about all you really need to know. You can add anything to the inventory that you need to, such as chem lights, bear traps, tents, things like that. So if you want to add a tent, we could just copy that and again place it in here. Just remember that this bottom one here is for the default player. This is if they're not a donor, a pro donor, or any of that stuff. If you do have donors, you have to manually add them in here yourself. So let's say that we got a new donor today, and uh, they their player ID is a bunch of threes. You need to add a comma at the end, and then a bunch of threes. 
so now we have three donors set. Everything else will happen on its own. You don't have to change anything past that. So once you have all of these set to how you want them, you just have to add the new donors or remove donors or whatever, and that's it for the script. Just remember that when you're going through and changing all of this stuff, that you consider balancing. This is a multiplayer game, and multiplayer games need to be balanced to a decent extent. You don't want to start someone with an AS-50 so that they can just walk around shooting people. You also don't want to start them with a whole bunch of gold, because they can just have a friend come by, kill them, and farm the gold constantly until they have enough for whatever they want. If you start them with like a bar of gold, that's not really a big deal, but if you start them with like a 10 ounce or two, that's really just asking for trouble. Just make sure that when you do go to give stuff to the donors, don't always just assume that everything's going to go smoothly. Try to balance them out. Like you can see on this one, the default player has had an axe when I started. The donor gets a, a gun with just, I believe, one magazine? Two magazines. And then the pro donor gets an SD gun and an OK primary. But the primary is something that cannot be sold. Try to use something that for the donors that can't really be sold to gain a higher advantage. The main reason for having the donor system on this is that the donor can get some extra stuff for helping out the server, but not something that's going to give them a major advantage. This will just help them stay alive long enough to get back to their base, rather than help them get a whole bunch of easy money. Now if you look below, you'll see that I have two new videos listed here. One is a new WAI install video. This one has an updated version of WAI that works much better and is more stable. If you had any issues at all with the previous one, this one will most likely work for you without any issues. If the emissions weren't spawning or something like that, Try this WAI. This one's been completely rewritten and really well done. There is also an install guide for safe zones. The safe zone install video goes over a relatively popular safe zone install with a few modifications by myself to make sure it works properly and doesn't have any errors. As always, thank you guys for watching and supporting my channel. I hope to hear how it all worked out for you. And just remember, if you have any issues, contact me. I try to respond to everything possible. If I don't respond to you, one of two things happened. Either I lost your comment somewhere, which is really annoying but it does happen, or I cannot comment on it. There's certain settings in your Google Plus that you have to change to allow people to comment on your, or to reply to your comment. If you don't change this to allow anyone to reply and you only allow people in your circles to reply, then I cannot reply to you. You need to fix that if you need a reply to your, to your uh, question. So just remember, I'm not deliberately ignoring any of you. I'm trying to answer everyone I possibly can. I don't have that many subscribers, so it's not an issue for me, whereas other popular YouTubers have, you know, thousands of comments a day, and they, there's not even enough hours in the day for them to possibly do it. Luckily for this channel, I don't have enough yet to not be able to comment on everything so I can get to each and every one of you as much as possible. Again guys, thanks for watching and I hope this really helped for you.